And HCC does not act on HPV directly, and I think that's um, really important to emphasize um, because if it acted on the virus, then we worry about resistance. Um, HCC, as it's been shown in many other disease sites uh, and um, conditions, it modulates the host immune system, and um, it's helping the body of the host immune system to clear the virus effectively. Um, HPV is commonly cleared by the immune system in younger women and men, um, in the teenage years, all the way, you know, even up to the young 20s, about age 25 is when our immune system starts to age. And that's actually where you can see um, graphically that the incidence of persistent infections starts to increase. Um, HPV persistent infections used to be only in the women over the age of 30. Now we've seen that over the age of 25. Um, but uh, it's key that it's working on the host immune system and basically bringing it, rejuvenating it back to its youth to work better. Uh, differences between the different strains of HPV? No. Um, we've had a variety of different HPV types um, on both our pilot studies as well as our phase two study, and we are now doing a low risk study. And the key thing is working on the host immune system. And um, that is where the HPV um, is cleared by the host immune system and it's not acting directly on the HPV. So we have found that it's, but it doesn't really matter the strain of the HPV. Um, it, we haven't looked yet on the impact of duration of supplementation, but it, that may be a reason someone may need longer supplementation to allow more time for the immune system to clear it. We um, recommend the three gram dose um, once daily on an empty stomach um, is what we've been using. Um, we looked at a lower dose and it works. It just takes much longer. And, and so um, the higher dose of HCC at three grams was much, it achieved a eradication of the HPV faster than the one gram dose. Yeah, we um, have looked at that uh, because of compliance. Uh, medication, oral medication compliance is difficult to achieve. So patients aren't going to reliably take those three doses um, from a pharmacology, pharmacokinetics effect on the immune system. The half-life of these immune markers are days. So the modulation of them is not going to be um, affected throughout the day. It's, it's, um, so it doesn't make sense that you'd have to continue to support the immune system periodically throughout the day, one dose a day supports it for days. Uh, not that we would promote missing a day or two, but um, we have found even if they miss a day or two of supplementation, it, they still have the benefit. Um, not that we encourage that, but. So it doesn't really matter. You, you, take, you take it one. It's, I, I mean, from a compliance, compliance standpoint, I think it's better just to take it once a day. I think it's easier for people to remember. Um, empty stomach, we did, we did in our pilot study see a difference um, with absorption. On an empty stomach is better, which is hard to achieve three times a day as well. So <laughs> a true empty stomach. So patients often either take it first thing in the morning or at the very end of the day. Either one is fine. It's well tolerated. So um, that's a very good question. We um, actually had learned from some of the flu vaccine data that HCC um, 3 grams and 1 gram improved the activity of the flu vaccine. That's why we had even pursued um, looking at a lower dose. And so intuitively, I think since it helps support the immune system, it would also help um, the efficacy of the vaccine. So definitely something long-term we'd like to look at.